Good evening. President Rodrigo Duterte signs today an act creating a national identification system in the country. The Philippine Identification System, or PhilSeas Act of 2018, aims to create a single official identification card for all citizens that integrates and interconnects various government-issued IDs. The national ID system will bear 13 sets of information, including the PhilSeas number, full name, blood type, date and place of birth, marital status, and the photo of the owner. More information, such as biometrics data, will be stored in the Filsi's registry. With the enactment of the law, the president believes that this will pave the way for efficient services delivery, reduce corruption, decrease administrative red tape, promote the ease of doing business, and strengthen financial inclusion. The chief executive also assures the public that the government will protect the data in the Filsi's database amid concerns of possible data breach and privacy violations. There is therefore no basis for, at all for the apprehension about the Phil ID unless, of course, that fear is based on anything that borders to illegal. If at all, the Phil ID will even aid in a drive against the social menaces of our poverty, corruption, and criminal, criminal issues, as well as terrorism. President Duterte encourages the Moro people and the other sectors in the Bangsamoro areas to participate in the plebiscite for the creation of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Rosalie Kos will tell us why. It's indeed a milestone because despite various challenges and after several attempts of past administrations, President Rodrigo Duterte has finally presented to the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF the landmark organic law for Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. President Duterte believes the BOL will end the decades-old conflict and will finally give way to peace, stability, and good governance in Muslim Mindanao. He also appeals to the Moro people as well as other sectors in Bangsamoro areas to exercise their rights in the plebiscite, whether to approve or not the BOL. I ask my Bangsamoro brothers and sisters as well as the indigenous communities and Christian settlers living within the Bangsamoro areas to actively participate in constructive discussion about the law in your homes, in your villages, and communities. But more importantly, I encourage you to take part of this up and coming plebiscite so that you may express your sovereign will through the ballot. Presidential Chief Advisor Secretary Jess Duresa says the plebiscite may take place between November 2018 and January 2019. The Chief Executive also appeals to everyone to give the BOL a chance. Let us work together as we continue the healing and reconciliation process. Let us give this law a chance to address the Bang Samoro people's aspiration for genuine autonomy while preserving our bond as a single nation and affirming the sovereignty of the indivisible Republic of the Philippines. Meanwhile, MILF Peace Implementing Panel Chair Muhager Iqbal says that the commissioning of the 30% of MILF troops and weapons will take place after the BOL is ratified by the majority of the Bangsamoro people. The process is already ongoing. At the moment, the BOL is notified and there will be an immediate intervention. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The Department of Trade and Industry believes that a continuous increase in prices of basic necessities and prime commodities may soon taper off towards the end of the year due to market forces. Here's Monoxon to tell us why. The prices of some basic goods have indeed increased. 
the Department of Trade and Industry made this admission saying that in almost 200 basic necessities and prime commodities listed on the suggested retail price, 22% increased its prices. This include products that people usually buy such as canned sardines and meat, milk, coffee, noodles, bottled water, candles, and condiments among others. Aside from this, prices of agricultural products also increase such as rice, chicken, pork, and vegetables. But among the products that greatly increase its price are the non-essential items such as alcoholic and sweetened beverages and cigarettes. Hirap ngayon sa budget kasi medyo mataas ngayon yung mga bilihin. Nakakainis, ang mahal-mahal. Saan ba makabili ngayon ng mura? According to Philippine Amalgamated Supermarket Association President Stephen Kua, manufacturers do not easily increase their prices. They are afraid to lose market share, especially when there are a lot of competition in the market. Manufacturers don't want to increase prices and lose market share, right? Pilit na pilit yun if they want to increase prices. DTI says oil prices contributed the inflation in the country. Kahit wala nung train, ganito pa rin may experience natin kasi ito talaga yung from the outside nang galing yung, yung pagtaas ng cost. Eh. So lahat ng pinupunta ng fuel or oil-based products, so utilities, uh, electricity, electricity kasama na doon, water, right. oh, kasama na rin yung housing, transport. But according to the president's economic managers, they see that high prices will start to go down by the end of the year. DTI says the inflation is temporary and the government is doing different ways to mitigate the effects of high prices, such as rice tarification, opening up cheaper retail stores, and conducting operation against profiteering. DTI advises consumers to be smart as there are retail stores that offer cheaper prices than others. Consumers just need to budget their money carefully and buy only the necessary things. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. Oil companies are expected to slash their pump prices this week. Oil industry players estimate a 10 to 25 centavo per liter rollback in the prices of gasoline and diesel while up to 30 centavos in kerosene. Earlier, Petrogas company has implemented a 20 centavo rollback in the prices of its diesel and gasoline. Meanwhile, the Department of Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is looking to transfer the provincial bus terminals in Cubao, Quezon City to an interim terminal in Valenzuela City. Here's why from Joe Anano. Terminals of buses bound for provinces along Cubao, Quezon City may likely be relocated to Valenzuela City interim terminal. This is following the enforcement of a new traffic management scheme seeking to totally ban the provincial buses from plying along EDSA beginning August 15th. Violators of the policy will be penalized with 2,000 pesos. According to the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, the plan to transfer the bus terminals in Cubao to Valenzuela aims to also ease traffic congestion in EDSA. The Valenzuela interim terminals can accommodate around 300 bus units. It will be operational starting August 15 and will serve as the main station for buses going to and from Central and Northern Luzon. Yun talaga ang uh, projection ng MMDA. Tanggalin yung mga provincial bus terminals sa ESA. We're planning na dun na lang kung kakayanin. There are 46 bus terminals along EDSA based on MMDA records and relocating this to another area might present difficulties for some passengers. Mahirap din kasi malayo sa amin. Una-una, kung mayroon kong dala, paano ba siyempre itataxi mo, hindi lang mapapalaki ka ng pamasahe. Ang hirap nga pagka palipat-lipat, eh, may dala pa akong ganito. Kung magiging maluwag po, eh, okay lang din yun. Para maiayos nga yung patong-patong na traffic ko. Nahihirap po pero kung, kung yun naman yung makakabuti, okay. The agency, however, clarifies that the proposal is still being studied. They are also coordinating with the Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board on the issuance of special permits for 150 city buses. This is to provide access for buses to load and unload passengers from the interim terminal. The agency is also looking to open the integrated terminal in Santa Rosa, Laguna this year that will cater buses bound for southern Luzon. 
The agency remains hopeful that the new traffic management scheme will help in resolving traffic problems along EDSA. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue Valenzuela City. A group of recognized victims of abuse during martial law is asking for an extension in the deadline for claims and cashment. Ray Palayo tells us why. Around 800 million pesos worth of claims are still set for distribution to recognized victims of abuse during the Marcos regime. According to the group Samahan ng mga ex-detainees, laban sa detensyon at aresto, there are still around 600 victims who are yet to receive their claims as they are having delays in processing the necessary documents required to prove that they are indeed the recognized recipients. The deadline for encashment of claims is until August 11, 2018 as set by the Human Rights Victims Claims Board. For this reason, the group appeals to Congress to immediately pass a resolution that would extend the claims distribution to December 2019. Otherwise, they would no longer have the chance to benefit from the compensation as the unclaimed money would be returned to the National Treasury. Ako'y nananawagan muli sa Kongreso, make it urgent. Kasi itong mga biktima ng martial law, pag hindi ito naibigay sa kanila, another injustice ulit ang mangyayari. Ako po, 1985, nung mawala yung asawa ko. Pag nababagit po yun, ang sakit-sakit ng loob ko. Lalo na po ngayon sa mga kapwa namin biktima na hindi po makakuha ng bayad ng sala. The Commission on Human Rights supports the claimant's appeal to also address other beneficiaries' concerns. Malacanang, in response, assures the victims of acting into the matter by imposing a remedy. Kailangan po gumawa ng executive order para lamang uh, ma-extend ng buhay just for the purpose of the banks honoring the signature of the designated signatories of the claims board. The House of Representatives is set to discuss the matter on Tuesday, August 7. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Quezon City. Thousands of Filipino mothers join a campaign coinciding with the celebration of the World Breastfeeding Month. Here's why from Gladys to Abby. Simultaneous breastfeeding activities participated by Filipino mothers and their infants are held in various parts of the country in celebration of the World Breastfeeding Month. In Pasay City, over 2,200 mothers nursed their children for over a minute on Sunday as part of a campaign called Hack Up Now, which means to latch on. This initiative aims to take away the stigma of breastfeeding in public. Sama-sama kami din dito para matanggal din ang stigma na hindi ka pwedeng magpadede sa labas ng iyong bahay. So very outward, very public namin ipinapakita sa lahat na breastfeeding is the best for our babies. Melissa Magaling, one of the participants and has been breastfeeding her children for six, says the nutritional value of her milk cannot compare to the formulated ones. Misconception na, na parang kapag one year old ng baby na wala na daw nutrition yung gatas, hindi, nag adjust ang gatas namin sa edad ng mga bari. Lizelle Santos, who recently had a child, says breastfeeding is also cost-effective. Yung lusog ng bata kapag ano, maano siya sa mga sakit, iwas sa sakit. Tapos na kasi nakita ko sa mga pamangkin ko na kung gano ka, gano ka lusog yung mga anak nila. Tsaka yung ngipin, ganun. Tsaka syempre, ano na rin, libre na rin, di ba? Last Friday, a similar breastfeeding activity was also held in Tagaytay City with 158 participating mothers and children. Sa mga first time, ma'am, tulad ko, um, try nyo mag-breastfeed, huwag kayong susuko kasi sa una talaga mahirap. Pag nakita mong malusog yung baby mo, sarap sa pakiramdam na, na nabigay mo sa kanya yung breastfeed na kailangan talaga ng baby. Aside po sa magiging healthy yung baby nyo, magiging slim pa din po kayo pag nagpa-breastfeed kayo. While 500 moms joined the simultaneous breastfeeding event in Legazmi City, Albay last Saturday. A 2011 Family Health Survey by the National Statistics Authority said over 92% of children in the Philippines between 6 to 35 months had been breastfed at some point, with 27% exclusively breastfed. 
The survey was conducted across 53,000 households in the country. Ang gusto pa rin natin mangyari na maorganisa sila. At least this group can always come to their house and encourage them to continue breastfeeding because it is incomparable to the uh, to the bottle feeding ma bukod sa mahal na marami kang sakit na makukuha because of how it is being prepared. World Breastfeeding Week is an annual global initiative running from August 1 to 7. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Over 140 bags of blood were gathered in a series of bloodletting activities in Cavite held by the Members Church of God International in the third quarter of the year. Let's find out the reason behind this effort in Aiko Miguel's report. Dave Alandizo knows fully well how it feels to badly need the blood. He says he and his family at one point in their lives needed at least 8 to 10 bags of blood for his brother, who later succumbed to cancer. May minsan sa time ng buhay namin, naging pinakailangan din kami ng dugo. Yung kuya ko nagkasakit din. So parang alam ko yung pakiramdam nila na kung paano mangailangan ng dugo na wala ka naman pambili. He says this desolate experience led him to become a regular blood donor. He is among those who usually participate in the mass bloodletting drive held by the Members Church of God International. Ayo, mahirap, maraming proseso. Tapos hindi ka sure na mapagbibigyan ka kagad kasi sa dami nga nung nangangailangan ng tulong. Uh, tapos yung minsan limited lang naman yung dugo na pwede nilang, pwedeng, pwedeng ma-release ng gobyerno natin. So... Kaya sa tingin ko maging, malaking tulong to yung ginagawang ganitong blood donation. In the third quarter of 2018, a total of 141 bags of blood were collected by the MCGI from a series of donation drive held in Cavite alone. These were forwarded to the Philippine Blood Center. Dr. April Andal, PBC Medical Officer 3, says this effort is important in saving lives because there are many patients who urgently need blood transfusion. These include people who figured in road accidents, infected with dengue, cancer, and other grave conditions. Oo, maraming salamat sa ang dating daan sa patuloy na pagsuporta sa Philippine Blood Center. Napakadami nating kababayan na araw-araw nangangailangan ng dugo. Sabi nga nila, hindi natin malalaman ang importance ng dugo the agency also reminds those who wish to donate their blood to follow the guidelines to pass the screening process. Dapat kumain ka, uminom ng tubig, so hindi nagugutom, hindi po yet. Dapat naka 6 to 8 hours of sleep, dapat wala rin sakit o mga ininom na gamot. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The PNP Responders officially grants to its chosen foundation the 1 million peso prize it received after bagging the UNTV Cup of season title this year. They also express gratitude for being part of the league's objectives. Bernard Dadis tells us why. Thousands of personnel and high-ranking officials of the Philippine National Police witnessed the official granting of the 1 million peso prize received by the PNP responders who was crowned as this year's UNTV Cup of Season Champion. During a flag racing ceremony at the Camp Grammy this morning, PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde led the handing over of the winnings to the team's beneficiary, the Public Assistance for Rescue, Disaster and Support Services Foundation or PARDS. It mainly distributes aid and support for calamity-stricken communities. Last July 30, the PNP responders reigned in the UNTV Cup executive face-off after defeating the Ombudsman Gulf Monsters. The PNP executive team is composed of 5 generals and 11 colonels who bullishly commanded the top 1 spot until the championship round. Kami ay uh, taus pusong nagpapasalamat kay uh, Kuya Daniel Razon at uh, sana uh, maging uh, successful pa ito, itong uh, adhikain niyang ito at uh, magtuloy-tuloy itong ating uh, UNTV executive uh, face-off na ito. Uh, ito ay uh, isang napakagandang avenue para doon sa collaboration at cooperation ng mga iba't ibang mga ahensya ng ating gobyerno. PNP senior cagers are also grateful to be part of the UNTV Cup 
because of the opportunity to help others aside from staying fit and playing basketball. Uh, sa lahat ng sumuporta, eh, kayo po ang aming inspirasyon. Kayo po ang nagbigay sa amin ng lakas at uh, salamat sa pagtitiwala at sana po maulit-ulit ang aming uh, nakuhang uh, karangalan. Kuya Daniel Lorzon, uh, maraming salamat po. Sana pagpatuloy niyo po ang uh, inyong uh, tiwala sa kapulisan. Anyway, yung uh, biyayang binibigay niyo ay binibigay din namin sa karapat-dapat na beneficiary para sa isang layunin mapanatili ang kaayusan ng ating lipunan. Una-una, nakakatulong kami sa kapwa. Uh, yung nga ho, uh, nabigay na ho namin yung pinanalunan namin. Pangalawa ho ay nakakaihirhisyo ho kami. Yan po ay malaking bagay ho sa aming mga kapulisan. At pangatlo ho, uh, yung taong bayan po ang aming inspirasyon para lamang ho maglaro sa UNTV. And though it's only been a week after the off-season, PNP junior players have already begun rigid trainings and planning ball play strategies in preparation for the opening of UNTV Cup Season 7 next month. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Some members of President Duterte's consultative committee expressed their dismay over the viral federalism video which involves Communications Assistant Secretary Moka Uson. May Bermudez will tell us why. Consultative Committee member Dean Ranilio Aquino vents on social media his disappointment over the viral federalism video posted by Communications Assistant Secretary Moka Uson. Uson is under fire over a footage circulating on social media entitled Sneak Peek of our Federalism Lecture Series. It shows Uson along with a pro Duterte blogger whom she told to dance and sing a jingle purportedly containing words pertaining to women's intimate body parts. Also expressing disgust over the said video are other members of the consultative committee and a number of netizens. Ang saligang, bata, ang saligang batas ay isang seryosong bagay na hindi magandang uh, uh, ibaba ng ganun kababa no, yung uh, treatment. I'm not disappointed with Asik Moka, but I'm so disgusted with the video. CONCOM Chair and Retired Chief Justice Reynato Puno meanwhile clarifies that the members of the committee are not consulted on how the Presidential Communications Operations officials, particularly Asik Moka, will campaign federalism. Hindi nga kami kasama doon sa pag-draw ng communication plan. So ako, wala akong personal knowledge doon. Even Malacanang believes information dissemination on federalism should be serious, especially when it calls for changing the country's constitution. According to Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar, ASEC Uson is not the official spokesperson for federalism. An interagency headed by the Department of the Interior and Local Government will designate the government's talking head in federalism info campaign. Pag, pag usaping uh, federalismo ng uh, pag-uusapan dapat siguro mas seryoso no dahil ito po ay uh, saligang batas ang pinakamataas na batas sa ating bayan I've spoken to Ding and Rosso kasi siya kasi yung kumausap kay Moka hindi naman ako kumausap Moka hindi naman yung interagency yung kumausap kay Moka so therefore it's not official kaya medyo nga na medyo na bad trip si ES nung uh, nung kausap ko siya kasi nga Wala namang, wala namang official announcement na merong spokespersons. And we already agreed last Tuesday, kung meron magsasalita, it's going to be the members of the CONCOM, it's going to be advocates of, uh, of federalism na ia-approve ng DILG. Some senators are also disappointed with the video and advised the PCOO not to utilize any techniques that would debase federalism. The PCOO should do away with it. Theatrical techniques will not work for such an issue such as federalism. Ayusin natin how we promote it in a more decent manner kasi mahirap naman yung ano, panghit. Continue to take advantage of your blog, you announce. Meanwhile, former Solicitor General Florine Hilbay is convinced such act is a form of disrespect for Constitutional Commission members 
and the Filipino people. So I think it's also disrespectful to the members of the consultative committee. Pinagharapan din naman po nila iyan at uh, parang binabastos yung trabaho nila. In her social media post, Asek Mwaka clarified that the said video was shot prior to her consultation with CONCOM spokesperson Ding Generoso. She also said that this is not a form of campaign video and not even a single centavo was spent for its publication. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The House of Representatives looks to approve the proposal seeking to amend the 1987 Philippine Constitution within two months. But the lower chamber is hesitant in adopting the Consultative Committee's proposal prohibiting political dynasty and limiting the terms of office. Grace Kassin tells us why. The lower chamber of Congress vows to work on the charter change bill until it meets the deadline of its passage in October. According to the newly designated chairman of the Committee on Constitutional Amendments, Vicente Ching Veloso, they will use the draft federal constitution submitted by President Duterte's Consultative Committee as reference, which states that a president and vice president must be elected to head the federal transitory government. Its provision would also force Duterte to step down during the transition period. House version on the Chacha Bill includes the election of a prime minister which caused many lawmakers to shun the proposal. The election of Congresswoman Gloria Arroyo to House Speakership also fueled fears on the creation of Primary's office. There is no position of Prime Minister in the Puno draft. And uh, I think, sa tingin ko lang, no, I doubt if uh, we, the committee, will be entertaining this also that we will be having a Prime Minister. The lower house, however, is unsure on whether to adopt or not the consultative committee's proposal to limit the term of office and to ban political dynasty. Veloso explains this is due to the opposition voiced by many lawmakers on the matter. But uh, let me admit no, that uh, a lot of congressmen are opposing this. Liberal Party President Senator Francis Pangilinan, meanwhile, cast doubt on the reasons of the lower house in expediting the passage of Chacha, especially since not many Filipinos are aware on the proposal based on recent surveys. Pangilinan also says that the Congress should spend more time in deliberating on the proposed charter change and shift to federalism being pushed by the Duterte administration. Meanwhile, Congressman Veloso is set to file a resolution on Tuesday pushing for the separate voting of the Senate and House on Chacha provisions. Grace Kassin, UNTV, News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The Duterte administration maintains its very good net satisfaction rating in the second quarter of the year according to a poll conducted by the social weather stations. Survey results show that 72% were satisfied with the government's performance, 13% were dissatisfied, while 15% were undecided. This gave the administration a positive 58 net satisfaction rating. The government also got the same rating in the first quarter with 69% satisfied and 11% dissatisfied. Among the government's programs that were rated very good are the building and maintenance works of the Department of Public Works and Highways, promoting overseas workers' welfare and women's rights, Marawi City re Reconstruction, and helping the poor. It also earned a good rating on protecting human rights government transparency, foreign relations and campaign against crime, terrorism and corruption. The Duterte administration believes the high rating is due to the projects implemented by the government despite criticisms. Hindi pa po tapos ang presidente, marami pa po darating na biyaya. No? Kahit anong batikos nila sa ating presidente, ang taong bayan, binibigyan pa rin siya ng very good na rating. Despite its decision modifying the regularization order of the Department of Labor and Employment, the Court of Appeals still, still orders the Philippine Long Distance Company to absorb some of its contractual workers. JL Asayo will tell us why. Affirmed but with modification. This is the ruling of the Court of Appeals after it releases its decision on the Department of Labor and Employment order to the Philippine Long Distance Company to regularize 7,344 workers last April. 
The CA favored Dole in the aspect of regularizing the PLDT's contractual workers engaged in the installation, repair, and maintenance of communication lines. But the CA put an exemption for those in janitorial, messengeral, and clerical services, information technology firm, and support services that include software and hardware and application development. Those from the back office support and operations, call center, sales, even medical, dental, engineering, and other professional services are also included. Depends on that. Even if yung alimbawa, you are allowed by law to outsource them, you have to be sure that yung service provider is a legitimate service provider. Although the PLDT will still be required to absorb some of its contractual workers, it is yet to be determined as to when it will take place because Dole is planning to file a motion for reconsideration which will further delay the absorption. On the other hand, PLDT's official press release showed no dismay. It says the CA agreed with PLDT's contention that the Secretary's regularization order was tainted with grave abuse of discretion. Secretary Bellio III, however, says... Well, that is belied by the decision of the Court of Appeals which affirm our decision with, with modification. So, walang, ano, walang grave abuse. As the PLDT regularization case continues, more than 3,000 retrenched workers applied at the emergency employment program offered by the DOLE. They will be working for a month in different public schools as support service and will receive a minimum wage. After the Court of Appeals released its decision, Dole's next move is to seek assistance from the Office of the Solicitor General to help pressure the PLDT to regularize all its contractual workers. JL Asayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Retired Supreme Court Associate Justice Samuel Martires takes his oath as the new Ombudsman. Acting Chief Justice Antonio Carpio administered Martires' oath taking earlier. Martires opted for an early retirement as SC Associate Justice to replace Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales, whose term ended last July 26. Martires previously vowed to look into corruption at the office of the Ombudsman when he formally assumes his new position as the country's new chief graph buster. As for the case of overall, uh, of overall Deputy Ombudsman Melchor Arthur Carandang, Martires says an appeal can still be made on the dismissal order issued by the office of the president. Karandang was first suspended in January due to corruption and graft allegations. I think uh, although Karandang still have 15 days to file his motion for reconsideration, I have to wait for that until such time that Malacanang denies that motion for reconsideration. Shall I cross the bridge? Uh, I don't think there is anything for me to or I don't have any discretion with respect to that. Once Odo Karandang goes to the Court of Appeals, I think he knows that immediately he has to leave the office. I don't have to implement the decision of Malacanya. The Commission on Elections asked for additional budget in the deliberation of their 2019 proposed national budget at the House Committee on Appropriations, TODA. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The deliberation of the Commission on Elections proposed national budget started today at the House Committee on Appropriations. The Comelec's proposed budget for 2019 is 10.28 billion pesos. This is almost 6 billion pesos lower than the 16.1 billion this year. But the poll body asked for additional 2.1 billion pesos fund for the honoraria of teachers who will serve in the upcoming elections in accordance with the Election Service Reform Act or ESRA. Comelec Chairman Sheriff Abbas explains that there is just 150 million pesos remaining in the fund for the honoraria and benefits from the Barangay and SK elections last May. Kulang pa kami ng more or less nasa 2.1 billion. Doon sa billion, billion sa ESRA. So ang proposal ng DBM nga per their, uh, letter to us is kukunin siya sa savings namin from the BSKE hanggang sa preparatory namin ng NLE for the 2018 budget. Comelec also requested for 854 million pesos for the conduct of a plebiscite for the Bank Samoro Organic Law. The Department of Budget and Management, meanwhile, promised to fill the locking budget of the poll body. 
also wants the proposed charter change or federalism passes in Congress. The COMELEC will need an additional 6 to 8 billion pesos to fund a separate plebiscite to ratify it. Uh, usually, the plebiscite manual yan. Yun ang ang sinasabi natin kanina. Yun yung sinasabi natin kanina na dapat uh, makita natin ano yung batas. Kasi dapat sasabihin nila mismo sa batas na isasabay or hihiwalay or automated ba siya or manual. Pero sa amin, per practice namin, talagang manual yun. After minutes of discussion, the Committee on Appropriations agreed on the proposed national budget of the COMELEC for 2019, as well as their requested additional budget. Just like an unfunded mandate, just yes. like before. And second, as with respect to the B, BO, BOL, uh, BOL uh, plebiscite. plebiscite, I think this is the priority okay. mandate of the administration. I think both of them would be... Uh, definitely be attended to by the committee. It can be recalled that during the start of the deliberation of the national proposed budget in the House of Representatives last week, the DBM stressed that although COMELEC's 2019 budget is lower than that of 2018, they still allotted fund for the midterm elections. House Majority Leader Representative Rolando Andaya Jr. also said that the allotted fund for the COMELEC dispels the no elections or no L scenario. The presence of this fund, yes, the policy is we will have an election next year, to make yeah. it clear. Just to allay the fears of uh, doomsdayers, conspiracy theorists, there will be an election next year, yes, midterm sir. elections. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Former Commission on Elections Chairman Sixto Brillantes and a representative from a watchdog group got into heated debates during the hearing on the alleged irregularities in the 2016 elections. Nel Maribuhok will tell us why. Brillantes challenged the group to just release its evidence that the said glitches resulted in a manipulation of election results. May sinasabi si Tony Chong dito na meron siya mga kopya na balota. Umiikot siya sa buong Pilipinas. Pinakikita niya yung balota. Your Honor, that is the subject of a criminal offense. 353 I invoke my right against self-incrimination, oh. Your Honor. Former Commission on Elections Chairman Sixto Brillantes questioned the integrity of the evidence presented by a watchdog group on the alleged irregularities in the 2016 national elections. Brillantes challenged the group to just furnish the committee the evidence that will show that there are manipulations in the election results. During the Congressional Oversight Committee hearing, the group Tanggulang Demokrasya presented its evidence of alleged selling of voters' database last 2015. Ang nagbibenta po nito, dating election officer ng Marigundon, Cavite. According to Senate President Vicente Soto III, the COMELEC should look into the said allegations. Meron ilang beses nang hindi lang si Atty. Chong nagbanggit sa akin niya, may mga nagbanggit na sa akin, taga Nueva Ecija, merong taga Iloilo. Na inaalok eh, nag-aalok ng kung ano-anong mga sistema na dapat biniimbestigahan talaga ng COMELEC yan. The Senate President will also force the poll body to release its audit logs. These logs contain details of transmission logs of the vote counting machines. Once these logs are authenticated, the allegations of irregularities and anomalies may be discredited. Senate Committee on Electoral Reforms Chairman Aquilino Pimentel III, on the other hand, believes that the poll body needs to answer many issues. Marami talagang mga pangyayari uh, na dapat ipaliwanag ng COMELEC. Some may be glitches, uh, but still, uh, we need uh, explanation from the COMELEC. But nga, bakit nangyayari ito? Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. An aspiring singer from Camarines Sur hopes to find her biological parents through her singing talent. Leslie Longboen tells us why. Jeva Antonio is among the many youths who tried their luck during the first leg of Wishcovery auditions in Naga Camarines Sur. More than her dream to become a popular singer, Jeva has a very strong motivation to be the country's next singing sensation. Bukod po sa gusto kong um, ma-share sa iba yung talent ko, um, gusto ko din pong makilala kasi yung biological parents ko. 
Despite being far away from her parents, Jeva is grateful for the people she considered her family. Thankful pa din pa ako kasi yung mga kumukup sa akin, hindi ako pinapabayaan. Sinusuportan pa ako sa lahat ng bagay. Though Jeva was not able to see and know her biological parents while growing up, she says she holds no grudge against them. Naiintindihan ko naman po kasi nagsacrifice siya para sa akin, para mabuhay ako. And thankful po ako doon. Jeva is hopeful that through Wishcovery, her voice can reach her real parents and finally meet them in the future. Lesi Longboen, UNTV News and Rescue, Naga City.